the story of Milton Hershey, known to millions as the Chocolate King. First saw light of day in the pleasant little village of Derry Church, Pennsylvania, during September of the year 1857. He first became acquainted with the art of candy making as a companion caster. For two years, young Milton applied himself to manufacturing tasty and wholesome candies. Then, at the age of 19, he decided he had learned all there was to learn as a candy maker's helper and resigned his position. He had saved a small amount of money and forthwith conceived the idea of going into business for himself. His family promptly squelched this notion as impractical and silly. His father, a rugged Pennsylvania farmer, had different plans for his son, so Milton tilled and plowed on the farm. Then one evening, leaving the family farm quietly, he tramped seven miles to a neighboring farm. Why, Milton, it's you. Yes, Aunt Frida. May I come in? Of course, dear. How's everybody at your place? Oh, fine, thanks. Father's pretty busy getting in the new crop. Say, Aunt Frida. Anything wrong, Milton? Well... You know I'm not very happy on the farm, and... Well, I almost wish now I hadn't given up my job in Lancaster. The money I'd saved is all gone in the farm. Well, what of it? The farm will be yours someday. But I don't want to be a farmer. Aunt Frida, did you know that I can make a better caramel than anyone is making today? Oh, Milton boy. (laughs) As if caramels were important. Well, they would be if I could make enough to sell. I made some tonight. Here, try one. Oh, no, no, no. Go on, try it. I don't want... Go on. Well, just one, then. Here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There. Aren't they good? Mm, Delicious. You must tell me how to make them. Well, I will, Aunt Frida. Well, that is, if you'll do me a favor. Yes, what? Lend me enough money to go back to the city. Oh, what on earth for? To set up a candy business for myself. It'll make money. I know it will. Dear me, I I never heard of such a thing. Well, how much will it take? Only a hundred dollars at the very most. Oh, Milton, I... I don't know. I... I, uh... We'll have to think it over uh, very carefully. Here. Uh, Have another caramel. It could have been the deliciousness of the sweetmeats that persuaded Aunt Frida finally to lend young Milton enough capital to venture forth on his new enterprise. At any rate, she did have faith in the boy. We next meet Milton some months later in Philadelphia, where he rented a room which he turned into a kitchen. He invested quite a few dollars in flavorings, kettles, and pots, and set himself up as a candy manufacturer. With the remainder of his money... He acquired an old spavin horse and a huge, cumbersome five-wheeled wagon. Over the cobblestone streets he rode, selling his wares. Fresh, delicious candy. Fresh, delicious oh, candy. Oh, boy. Whoa, Nellie. We have a customer. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, what kind of candy have you got? Oh, all kinds. Peppermints, caramels, chocolates, and, and they're all nice and fresh, too. Well, who makes them? I do. Hmm. Well, they can't be very good. Oh, yes, they are. Here, try a sample of whatever you like. Well, well, I'll try one of these. Well, that's not bad. Well, how much is it for a bag of these? Five cents. Whoa, Nellie, whoa. Well, well, what's the matter with your horse? I don't know. She's been acting up all day. Whoa, girl, whoa. Would you like a bag of these? Well, I guess I... I don't like the way that horse is acting. Whoa.
So ended Milton Hershey's first independent business venture disastrously as the clumsy five-wheeled cart upset over the rough cobblestones of Philadelphia streets. Abashed, Milton sold his few possessions and decided to return to the farm with a debt to his Aunt Frida staring him in the face. However, it wasn't long until he had settled that score by peddling his candies to the neighbors and small surrounding towns. A few years later, Milton set up in business again, this time in Lancaster. From the day he opened the doors of his little shop, success seemed to flow to him in an unending stream. Hershey's Crystal A caramels were almost as well known as are those familiar foil-wrapped bars today. In May of 1898, the charming and beautiful Catherine Sweeney became Mrs. Milton Hershey. Only after success had come would he ask her to share his life. Then... Early in 1901, while the shadows of big business were being cast, a group of prominent candy manufacturers called on Mr. Hershey in his Lancaster offices. Mr. Durand, spokesman for the committee, presents their case. Mr. Hershey, the companies these gentlemen represent, as well as my own, are all merging. Now, needless to say, a merger without Hershey's crystal egg caramels... I see. You want me to merge my company with yours? That's it, exactly. Yes, indeed. Yes, that's what we have. Well, gentlemen, I feel flattered, but I regret the answer is no. No? <laughs> but look here, Hershey. This would mean sharing in the profits of the other five companies. Durant, I'm not interested in more profits. I'm comfortable and happy running my business as I see fit. But what man would turn down another thirty or 40000 a year? Milton Hershey. Well, Durand, I guess the merger's off. I'm afraid so. Don't oh, know. Just a moment, boys. Mr. Hershey, would you consider selling your business to us outright? Well, I... I... say unofficially, of course. It would be worth uh, about a half a million to us. Really, Durand, I... I uh, may be talking out of turn, but I feel if we don't get Hershey, we're all through. Personally, I think this deal is worth at least a million. A million? What do the rest of you have to say to that? I, I, think I, I would have probably... Gentlemen... You'd rather take me off my feet. I think a million dollars would. Gentlemen, before I can give you my final answer, I must talk this over with my wife. Catherine Hershey approved, and so Milton Hershey retired. With a million dollars to his credit, they set forth on what was to be a two years journey to every corner of the globe. A few weeks later, they were in a luxurious hotel in Mexico City. Sitting alone on the balcony of their suite, they were listening to an orchestra playing in the patio below. Well, Milton, how do you like Mexico now? Well, not half so well as Lancaster County, my dear. Oh, really? Catherine and I have been doing a lot of thinking since we left home. You know, when a man gets wealthy, he either gets very selfish or his money worries him. Now that I've made our money, I have no desire to make more. But I have an idea I'd like to carry out. And... What is your idea, Milton? I'd like to manufacture a superlative milk chocolate in a plant where conditions would be as fine and wholesome as the product. Not as a money-making venture, Catherine, but for two things. To occupy my time and to make it possible for men and women to work and live in comfortable, happy surroundings. Milton, you're really anxious to get back into business? I mean it with all my heart, my dear. Well, what's your answer? I want you to be happy, Milton. So my answer is, let's pack up now. I'm lonesome for home, too. Returning home, Milton Hershey decided to build his chocolate plant on the same ground where, as a boy, he had gone to school. However, he was not content to build just a factory. He built a model factory, spotless and gleaming, with recreation, rest, and dining rooms for his workers and small, neat homes which they could rent at a nominal cost. Thus started the now famous town of Hershey, Pennsylvania. And then, Hershey plunged into great philanthropies, schools, libraries, community buildings, but in particular, additional attention to a boys' industrial school he had founded. Then came an evening when he invited to dinner... All the executives of his various enterprises. <laughs> now, and now, if I may have your attention for a moment. I want each of you to look under your place cards and see what you find. <laughs> well, Milton, what is all this? <laughs> this piece of paper says, Good for One Life Membership in the Hershey Country Club. 
Well, where is this club? Well, Lou, the club happens to be this very house. <laughs> oh, thanks. What do you mean? You mean you're going to give us this house for a country club? Exactly. Since Mrs. Hershey's passing, I, I don't need a home anymore. But where are you going to live? Yeah, that's a question. Oh, I'm a member, too. I shall take a three-room suite and live here. I'm paying rent for it, too, you know. Oh, well, boys, for he's a jolly good fellow, he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. So, Milton Hershey became a paying guest in the home which was once his own. A big user of sugar, he acquired 90,000 acres in Cuba, where, with his usual genius, he created a second town of Hershey, as modern and fine as the first. It is noteworthy to relate that Mr. Hershey was among the first of America's many great industrialists to give back much of his company to the men who worked for him, making them stockholders. One time to a friend, Milton Hershey expressed his views. Try as he may to avoid it, every human being has a contact, remote though it may be, with every other human being, whether it concerns food, clothing, or other necessities. All is obtained through the labor of another person. One supplies, the other demands. The truth of the matter is, we're all dependent upon the other. So it seems to me that the world does not owe the individual a living so much as we all owe the world a good and useful life. And in these words, he expressed his panacea for living, one which he practiced constantly and one which made him an outstanding example to his fellow men. Milton S. Hershey, Captain of Industry. <laughs> <laughs>